Yes, hello and welcome to the Jock and Journo podcast. Oh, we are excited for this one because we have a special guest. My name is Jay Clark. I'm joined by the six-time All-Australian, five-time best and fairest. He hates me saying that. It's Scotty Penabry. How are you, mate? Good, mate. How are you going? Very excited for today. Where I am because not only is this man one of our Collingwood favourites, I feel like, and don't you reckon, Scott, that Braden Maynard is one of every football fan's favourites? Don't you think they just warm to his... The bros. The competitiveness... And the sort of wrecking ball style that he plays. Hello, good morning to you, Braden. How are you? Morning, Jens. Thanks for having me on. Great to be here. How excited <coughs> are you about the, the uh, being on a podcast? Because I remember, I know you're the captain of, a, of the footy club <laughs> now, and you've and you've climbed the mountain. Uh, but sort of going back early days, you know, when it came to speaking in front of a group, yep, or being a bit of a presence in the footy club. How did you go back then with this sort of stuff? No, shocking. I was um I wasn't great at all. But I knew I did know that at some stage I was I was gonna get better with public speaking mm-hmm. and speaking on uh podcasts or whatever it may look like. I um I did know that I was gonna get a lot better at it. I did practice a bit um at at the pies and um sort of when I was away from the club I did practice a lot and I did get told that the only way you're gonna get better is if you just keep doing it and I didn't want to do that, but I sort of just came to the conclusion that I have to do it. So um, every now and then I'll do some extra media stuff just to just to learn and to get better at public speaking. He gave yeah, public one of speaking. the all-time great best and fairest speeches. Which was a reality check. And from that point on, I thought, no, nah, that's it. I can't no, be taught. I can't be taught. Tell no, me. It was Crown Palladium was on their feet. No, what happened, Scott? thousand people. What, what year was this? You come? 20, I reckon it was a year before sort of COVID kicked in. Yep. Yeah. What 18 happened? 18 or 19. Well, we just... Had a few beers, a bit of Dutch courage and got up and just delivered. <laughs> and it was yeah. auth- very authentic, bros. And, yeah, it uh, wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but yeah. Everyone loved it. No, I well, thought it was embarrassing. I was bloody sweating and it wasn't good. It wasn't well, good at all. There's been some massive moments of your career. When I get to him, you nearly decapitated Dylan Clark this season after he went off to Nick Dacos. <laughs> you, you, uh, you got Ed Langdon last year after the, um, all duck, no dinner and you went to bat for your good mate, Jordy to go in. I want to speak to you about that a little bit later on as well. But what did it feel like to be captain of your footy club at the weekend, mate? Because you've always sort of said you're a bit reserved at times. But but when Fly said, um, and I know you're in the leadership group, mate, you're captain this week. How, how did you feel about that? Pretty surreal. I um, Obviously a huge honour to, to Captain Collingwood. I, um, I'll be honest, I never thought it would, it would happen. Um, but to be able to captain the boys and lead the boys out for, it'll probably be only one game. I um I think maybe Howie or Tay will be this week in the following week or whatever it looks like. But yeah, true honour. Um, very surreal. It was um sort of leading up to the game. I was thinking about it, thinking about what I should say before the game and whatnot. But I um it sort of just yeah blink blink before and I, it's all over. I uh, can't believe how quick it actually went. Um yeah, a little, little bit nerve wracking, but um yeah, I guess it's another step in the right direction. Did you find yeah. it different? Like, you know, it's like you just go out and play every week. Yeah. So I found, like, I found when I first got it, just, oh, I just do yourself. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't know. It's, it's almost like there's an mm. added thing because it's like, it's not so much about you anymore. Not yeah. that it ever really is. But then when you become captain, even if it's for one game. Yeah. Did you find that it's different? Even though you try not to make it. Yeah, you? it was different. You try not to overthink it, but I'm an overthinker. Mm. So I, I was thinking about it that day quite a lot. It's, um. That's stressing. Yeah, it was a great experience. I like doing the coin toss. I absolutely love the coin toss. That was great fun. <laughs> Even though you didn't boys. get to do anything because they get to pick. Yeah, they? exactly right. But I still won it. So I'll claim it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks because I did really enjoy it. And it's um, something I'll never take for granted, that's for sure. You're certainly um, a competitor and a combative beast um, on the field. I remember uh, the night you got drafted, I spoke to the List manager Derek Hine at the time spoke about Geordie. He said, well, powerful, explosive, can do special things, can win the ball. I said, what about the young man, Maydard? And he said, and I remember this, he goes, he's got a big bit of Luke Hodge about him, that he's tough. He, said, he goes hard, he'll die for you out there. They were his words. And I reckon he nailed it, Decker. Not far wrong, is he? Uh, I, um, well, yeah, there's some pretty, pretty big words from Deck. I, um, I've had a few conversations with him over the years and, we have a really good connection and, um, I did speak to Collingwood probably more than any of the other club in my draft year. So mm-hmm. I did have a, did have somewhat of an idea that I'd end up at Collingwood if, if that happened. And I, um, yeah, pick 30 came around and 
they called my name out and I uh, I thought I was going to go earlier, but I think maybe a few clubs were a bit um <laughs> a bit iffy about me Why? with my um <laughs> yeah with my social side. But hey, I, I, I um, remember before the draft, I always like to ask Decker, <laughs> "Who are you going to take with the first pick?" I don't really just give me two options because mm. he always used to say, mm. "Couldn't believe this bloke here was here at pick 30. Like, mm. He always would say it. Mm. Yeah, I said, well, I think we had pick five, didn't we? Was that first yeah, pick, that pick five, and five. then Darcy, and then myself, yeah, and then we. I think we took. We actually ended up taking about nine or ten players that, year. that draft year, but and I remember saying I mean, to Decker though, at pick five, who are you going to take? Mm. He goes, oh, it's out of Dugowie or Maynard at really? pick five for us. And he's like, yeah. and as he always does, he's like, I think Dugowie will will take him, and then Maynard's a probably a better chance to maybe be there, but doubt it. Pick five. Yeah, so it was mm. a flip of the coin for the bras, and he was a bit flat that he went thirty. <laughs> That's right. It doesn't matter. It's just got to get in, right? Don't you? Yeah, just got to get yeah. in. Um, Sorry, don't bother me. One of my favourite moments of the season last year was when Ed Langdon, the Melbourne <laughs> wingman, said um, that Collingwood was one trick ponies, all duck, duck no, all duck, yeah, all duck no dinner. He said. Now I I got told that you put you were the first one to put the clip in the Collingwood WhatsApp group. Was that right? <laughs> you said, well, well, boys, have a look at this. Am no, I right? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that's no, incorrect. No. I um, it was funny because leading up to the game. Obviously heard it and we all heard it and then we spoke about it before the game and uh, funnily enough, I was I was the first bloke to get my hands on him. Um, yep. Yeah, it's, it's quite funny. You just see dip come from, from the come center, from yeah come from the center bounce. Yeah, and it went wide. You know, it's, just, it's almost like that the poetic justice of the story. It's like yep. the big story. Yep. Mm. Who's the one guy from Collingwood you probably don't want to get your the one person? The ball bounces like sideways back to Langer's where Braz is, and then it was uh, just. I loved it because it just added dip. the theatre to the game. Did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you see Dip come from bloody 10 deep and just lay his elbows straight into his face. <laughs> no, he had about, he had about four no. elbows in his head. <laughs> I felt bad for him, but it's all part of the game. What did you say to him in that moment? Oh, I heard you. No, I actually didn't say anything. I was just rubbing my head up against his head. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, a bit, of, a bit of tension in the first couple of minutes, but um, it was a big game. It was a yep. very big game. But, yep. um, yeah, it's all part of it. The theatre of those moments adds so much like, Really, it didn't matter. Like that, that happened in the first what, twenty seconds of the yeah. game. Then you just yep. go. I think they kicked the first goal. Yep, doesn't really matter. But the theatre, yep. like the crowd loved it. The commentators yeah. went choppo. Like <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and, like it's cool to have that. And I think it happened this year with Port Adelaide. Oh, it was Bruz again who said, like, you got to bring your sort of A game. Oh yeah. Because we're on top of that, whatever. And then like yeah. the game though, going over there, there was so much more theatre. And yep. it's like yeah. this is a big game, and it just yep. adds. But yep. it's like, yeah. I don't know. You just sort of like, I loved it. I think Fly said it as well, loves yep. that theatre and it builds it up and helps promote the game. And Because once you start, you know, it's just footy again. And, yep. But it adds just that little bit extra, which I love. And I don't reckon we do enough because everyone's so worried about getting like cut down or you shouldn't say stuff like yep. that or you shouldn't do this. But yep. you guys have a field day when that sort of stuff comes out for right or wrong reasons, but it's awesome. Or it just adds more theatre and interest in the game. Mm, Did yeah. you feel any different coming, stepping that Port Adelaide game, having said they have to bring our A game? Um, I felt like what I said wasn't even that bad, really. But no, then, it wasn't. It was fine. Yeah, yeah, it was so fine. But then I think, yeah, Ken might have taken it a little bit too far during the week with what he said. But yeah, um, I, I, like, it's all part of it. Guys, my mum and dad were at the game, and like I played a lot of footy. Mm. I was having breakfast with mum and dad, and as I was leaving, dad goes, "Make sure you look after yourself tonight." <laughs> I was like, "What? Is it going to be a big fight or a Royal rumble?" But like, because everyone gets caught up in the emotion and the build. Yes, yeah. so, you know, he's like leaving. Like, Scott, look yeah. after yourself. Yeah, same as every other game. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Dad. So you've got inside the um, inside your Collingwood jumper. You've all got something written, and I don't yep. even think we've spoken. What have you got in yours, Scott? Can't tell you. It's that secret, is it? Mine is, but everyone's seen his. Mm. Why is his so secret? Well, because like, no one's seen it. You only know the yeah. ones you've seen. He's got his jumper ripped off. He's about ten I times think, this year. So yes, <laughs> yes, and it was he, a bit of it was a bit of Devin Robinson about you when your, when your jumper <laughs> yeah. came off too. I think there's been a few boys. Replaced. Yeah, a few boys have had their jumpers ripped off this year, and I think it's yeah, been shown in the media. So tell us about that. In. Yours is what? No, well, his is competitive beast. Yeah, mine's isn't it? competitive beast. Um, tell surprise, us about that. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, surprise, surprise. It's pretty much what I base my game on: just competing to the best of my ability mm -hmm. for the full four quarters until the final siren. Um, I'll do whatever I can um, to win every contest, to halve the contest, but. It's just something that I feel like I've always had since since a junior. I um I've always been competitive, love the aggressive and um contact side of of uh, football, and um I feel like I've used it as an advantage. That's for sure. And I just mm. yeah love going out there and 
laying big tackles and um, doing all sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's a great trait to have. Alex Neil Bull and tackle, just about the best one you've laid. <laughs> I've seen the I footage of you. I think it is number one, but um, I'll tell you what, the Walters one when we played Freo a few weeks ago is probably up there, I reckon. Still trying to the dig him up here. One was, <laughs> it was almost like a jiu-jitsu move. Yeah, I know. Bear, I, I think I caught him because he sort of jumped and I caught him while I was midair. So, yes. Um, Extra velocity. Yeah, I was actually quite, squ- uh, quite scared, sorry, after the game. I got a, I got a um, few messages and... From randoms, but I, uh, I got a call from Shan the next day saying they're going to review it. So I thought, yep. oh, am I going to get a couple of weeks here? But it was actually all good. It was a yep. pretty clean tackle, I thought. So, yep. yeah. So take us back, Bruzzy, the start of your journey at Collingwood. You came in and the great man here, I mean, rumor has it or legend has it that Scotty had to call you in <clears> or you had a meeting with him. You had a meeting with the leadership group. What happened, Scott, back in the day, back in Bruzzy's first season? Because no, he obviously yeah. had a lot of talent. I think it's like when you're... When you start, and like you can talk to this bros as well, it's like, how did you find the start of your career, like adjusting from year 12 TAC Cup to year one, <clears> year two <throat> AFL? Like, because it, like footy in year 12 and that, you can still, you know, go out on the weekends, you can still do all this because no one knows who you are. Then when you get drafted, especially to like a big club, people start to know who you are. You played some games early, you played a lot of games in your second year as well. Mm. People start to realize who you are, and then you realize as well the game's fairly demanding. Mm-hmm. So you can't get away with a lot of this stuff. So mm. yeah, even if you want to talk to that, like your development from year, like year 12, first year, second year, when sort of, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. That, and then we had to have a bit of a chat just to see where you're at. Well, yeah, I definitely didn't have my priorities right. I have spoken about it a bit, but um, it is a big jump from, from year 12 to going to the AFL system. Mm. Um, it is very demanding. And I just, my work to life balance wasn't great at all. Mm. Like I didn't, understand what to what was expected of being an AFL player I mean I thought you just sort of get through the week and then play on the weekends which um obviously you you can't be doing that like Mm. I I never really did extras I sort of just went on talent but um as a couple years went by I didn't really change much and I had to have a conversation with Dip and a few of the boys and um yeah from that conversation I put plans in place and There was one year where I was really strict with what I did and we put like curfews in and um, other sort of rules that I had to go by and I did follow them and I felt like I had a pretty good year, but um, it has to go for longer than just a year. And I Mm. feel like I've just been able to learn Mm. a lot from that sort of one year and those conversations. So, Mm. um, yep, I do thank you for that. And the other boys that were in the leadership group, I think it was about 15 blokes in the leadership group back then. But (laughs) What um, is it it like being my ball in that moment? Yeah, from about, I seriously think in the leadership group back then there was ten. There was would have been ten. Yeah, there was about nine of us. Right. So when I got pulled horrible. into the leadership group, there was sort of ten big boys just staring at me. I was in my first or second year, whenever it was, and yeah, um, yeah, it was intimidating. It's all humbling. Yeah, yeah, very intimidating. But I guess that's it's that's what so, happens. Yeah, like, it's not so much reading like in the first second year, like reading the riot act, and like this is it's more trying to help them because as I said like your first year, you've got no idea. You're just doing the training program that's in front yeah. of you. Mm. And you don't know what you don't know. But mm. then all of a sudden, when you put a plan in place and you're like, right, on the weekends, like if I go out, I'm going to be home by, you know, midnight, 1 a.m. During the week, I'm going to try and eat like this. I'm going to do two extra things. And then that starts to snowball. Mm. You feel good. You start playing better footy. Then you feel really good. You start playing better footy. And then you make it at the grade and you feel like you're a consistent performer. Then the challenge with AFL is that's just one year. Mm. Now you got to do it again. Yeah. You've got to keep doing it. Rolls over. And then all of a sudden, all the things that are distractions, you realize you can't do them anymore. But if no one grabs you and helps you learn that, mm. if you don't have senior players around, you're never going to know. You'll just go, well, this is what everyone's doing. So I'm just going to yeah. do it as well. Mm. So yeah, I feel like a lot of guys could fall through the cracks. And I feel like as a senior player, it's your responsibility. And that's Bruzz's responsibility now. Like as a senior player in the leadership group to help younger guys, if he sees that, like, and he's better to speak to it. It means more coming from him than me because he can grab these guys. Hey, I went through some of this stuff. And it's, it's not really your fault, but let's, let's work on these two or three things here and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, I spent my first year out of high school up at the snow, um, for a year. And it's fair to say there weren't a lot of extra gym sessions or, um, <laughs> concentration <laughs> sessions. on my meal plan. So, uh, the gap year coming out of school, you know, I, I love that time out, that time to relax. So that's the hard thing with a lot of guys now. We don't get, there's no gap year for these guys. So I remember for me, it was year 12. Well, yeah, year 12, I'd finished year Straight 12 in. for like two weeks. Yep. And then I was, I moved to Melbourne, drafted on a Friday, moved to Melbourne on a Sunday. Yep. 2K time trial on a Monday. Yep. Like Nathan Buckley's my new teammate. 
Well, geez, I'm 17. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I was living in sale. Yeah. So it happens really quickly. You don't get a gap year. And that's the other thing that's really hard is, especially for guys, I reckon, who stay near where they, like, you know, you grow up in the main streets of Brighton. Like it's, <laughs> it's tough because like you still have all your friends right near you yeah, and they're all 18, 19, 20. They're yes. going out, they're doing what you want. And of course they're going to go, Hey bros, we're going to go out this weekend, a few beers. Yeah. Like we're 18 city, like we're, the lure, let's go. Whereas the guys are like, I have to move away. So it's like all my mates are in sale going mm -hmm. out. I'm three hours away. So I'm like, well, I don't really know anyone in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to sort of stay home for the weekend. So yep. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a big challenge because you got to go from being 17 or 18 to yeah. 26 straight away. I think I texted you one day, it was like January 10 or January 15 on a Saturday and you said that you had a 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. gym session Sunday morning, Yeah, the next morning. I'm not sure, maybe you, or maybe Geordie or <clears throat> one of you I think was going with you, but in the middle of January, 6 or 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Well, the, worst, the worst like time a of being an AFL player is Christmas break. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> is on like full relaxation mode. And we are literally in the middle of the probably hardest yeah. block. Everyone's yep. like, you've got Christmas break. That's when you got to do all the work over yep. that period of time. Yeah. That's a solid yep. period. So the same stage, like you're, you're drinking a lot because you're with your family, you're eating a lot and mm. you sort of got to work out a lot. So you, yeah, you definitely have to find the balance, but yeah, it's a bit of a challenging couple of weeks. I uh, was once running in Perth on Christmas morning. I couldn't sleep. So I get up early and ran. And I saw the three Selwoods coming at me um, over there in Perth up near Trigg. So the discipline um, is quite an achievement. But did you feel like that penny dropped and that you changed after this sort of feedback? Because since then you've been incredibly consistent Yeah. for the, for the bulk of your career. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I feel like I, I definitely know now, um, and I'm still learning, but I definitely know now what's, what's needed to sort of play week in, week out. Yep. Um, cause you definitely can't go and play and then go out and sort of do what I used to do and just be an idiot or whatever it looked like. But I, um, yeah, I know now that what's needed sort of during the week training extras, yep. um, to get your body right, uh, to play week in, week out. You can't, you can't be doing, you can't be doing that stuff. So I, um, yeah, very thankful. Um, very honored to sort of have these people around me to, to have chats with me. But, um, now I'm old enough to now uh, realize that, yeah, that I, like I can't mm. go and do that stuff that I was doing. So, I, uh, my priorities in life right now and at the moment are, um, yeah, just feeling good, healthy weekends. Um, yes, I do like to see my mates every now and then, uh, for a beer or two and catch up, but, um, yes, sort of staying in, watching a movie, going to the movies, wake up, uh, early on a Sunday morning, Rob going to the beach, the just, yeah, just relaxing. Is, I feel, <laughs> I feel so much better and, um, mentally I feel a lot better as well. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's definitely helped. You mentioned your mates. You do seem like an incredibly loyal person, Bruzzy. You strike me as a very loyal person. Yep. And in the midst of the Geordie Degoe, um, Bali blow up <clears throat> middle of last year, was it June 2022? He was having some time off. The whole world was caving in on him. You remember that period? It was bananas, wasn't yep. it? <clears throat> you guys put up with a lot of attention at the football club, but there was a whole lot more cameras. It was dominating mm. everything. And, um, at that point, it really did seem like it was unclear whether Geordie was going to stay at the football club. He's, you know, his, his future really was up in the air. I spoke to you after a game. I can't remember if it was St. Kilda or Essendon or something like that. And I said, and I knew you were tight with Geordie, obviously. And I said, Braden, what about your mate Geordie? How's, how's he going? What are you, what are you thinking? And you, your exact words were, I really miss him. I just want him back here. I want to give him a hug. And the coach Fly McRae said sort of something similar. He said, he's got a great heart, Geordie. He said, you're, these are his words. You said, he's a really loving, caring person. Cause we saw the video on the Bali stuff and you know, rightly or wrongly, seems like he's a bit of a party yeah. boy or yeah, hooligan yeah. Or, or whatever. <clears throat> and then you paint this picture of him. You said, I just want to get him back. This is where he belongs. All right. He's part of our family here and he can do it right mm -hmm. with a bit of help. And, um, I thought it was, re it was really strong in the moment cause you went into bat fit for your mate. And then since then, he's, he's been a complete success story. But can you take us back to then? Because at a time when things were only really uncertain, didn't know whether he was going to stay at the football club, you really went into bat for him. Why was that? Uh, I did. I do remember that. I um, yeah, It's a bit of a hard one because I, I got drafted with Jordan. We definitely have a bit of a unique sort of relationship and connection. And um, yes, he is one of my best mates at the club. Um, he has made a few mistakes, but... No matter the mistakes he makes, I, I'm always there for him. And, um, yeah, those comments were 
exactly how I was feeling. Mm. He, um, I felt like having time away from the club uh, was a good thing, but also I felt like that he probably could have been around the boys because we would have really welcomed him mm. uh, back and uh, got around him and then it would have taken his mind off a few things. But um, each to their own, I, I do feel like, yeah, the relationship we have um, is pretty special. Like, um, yeah, he is he is a really loving and caring guy. Like, he has got a big heart. Yes, he likes to muck around and have some fun around the club and um, go out and have a drink. But, um, yeah, if push comes to shove, like, he's a really good dude and a mm-hmm. really, really um, caring person. So that's all that matters really in my eyes. And he, um, he's obviously really loyal as well and trusts the club with, with everything. So, um, yes, he's made a few mistakes, but far out doesn't everyone. Yeah. Right. Oh, I've always said, like, to... And my missus said it best. He's like, if I was ever out in Melbourne. Oh, of Alex would be listening. Yeah, without, yeah, good hell. Without me. And I was like, if she ever got into trouble, what sort of teammates would I want there with her? Mm. And it's like Geordie and Bruz. Mm-hmm. Like that would, she would be safe as houses if anything ever happened. And then she would. Also with kids. If I ever bring my kids in, mm. it's like Geordie and Bruz are always the best two by a mile. Yeah. Or happily let them look after them for a few hours, not the whole day. But, <laughs> but yeah, like stuff like that. It's like the stuff that you don't see um, with these guys that. Yeah, big hearts, extremely loyal. Mm. You know, brothers has got mad white line fever, but off the field, mm. big cuddly teddy bear, mm-hmm. big cuddly, cuddly teddy bear <laughs> off the field. So that's it. Um, that's it. But yeah, so that's why, and that's why I think guys love them and are drawn to them because yep. of their personalities and yep. they bring the group together. You are a hugger. You, you are the most huggable AFL person. You dish out hugs. Like sometimes you knock a bloke over and then you pick him up. <laughs> you pick your opponent up. I'll never forget. I actually did they it once. They, walked, they, walked, they fell over the white line. So <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. No, I actually remember picking up a few blokes after a big tackle or whatever it may look like. And Dip would actually, I remember one game he told me not to do it. Yeah. I don't think Dip liked it. So He's a hard ass like that, isn't he? I, um, yeah, Dip's different in that way, but I sort of <laughs> like it. But I, um, yeah, if someone's on the ground, whether it's my teammates or opposition, like I'm going to mm. go over and help them up. But um, yeah, I, yeah, it was quite funny when Dip told me not to do it. But <laughs> um, that was a while ago. I don't think you remember it, but yeah, it was pretty that funny. That was back, back in the days when... Um, and we were talking about this yesterday at the club, sort of when he was cutting his teeth as a player. Mm. Um, when was your first year? Like, I'm shocking. And you think I'm taking the PIWS, but I'm shocking with when people started and how old they are. Like, really bad. <laughs> 15? So he's, I don't know. 2015, maybe, yeah. yeah. 2015 so like was my first year. Yeah. 17, 18, I reckon. That's when you were starting to be like, I belong here. And you were yeah. in some of those yeah. one-on-one battles. Who were your favorite one-on-one? Because that oh, used to be yeah. a bit back in the day when yes. the magnet board got circled. Mm. Maynard... Like Maynard, well, Toby Green, circle the matchup. Yeah, circle, this is a big yeah. matchup, bros. If you get this done, we win. Like, who were oh, some yeah. of your favourites, or who made you the most nervous? Um, Liam Ryan was always one that um, was pretty tough. He's he's a really good player, but I'll never forget um, through 20, uh, 2018, 2019, some of the matchups I had on Toby Green. Um, yeah, crazy player, really good, um, really hard to play on, but. Yeah, that was sort of back in the day when you did have a preferred matchup um, and there was a lot of tension built up um, before the game. After the game, there was a lot of media around it. But um, yeah, I I thrived in those situations and I still do, but we don't really do that anymore. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. Like only in my sort of third, fourth year and having these big matchups, but that's what I loved, loved doing. I think it was, I remember that. That was 2000 and. 18 and in the finals, GWS had beaten up. Yeah. Had beaten up the Bulldogs the week before. Yeah. And then I reckon we spoke that week because you played GWS and I mm. said, well, what happens if they bring that stuff in? <laughs> and you, yeah. you said, bring it on. Yeah. We'll be ready, Toby. Was it, but, was it, was that the second final? Yes. So we lost to West coast. They yeah. beat the Bulldogs and then we played them at the G. Yep. And uh, we won that crossed over and played yeah. Richmond. Richmond. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I remember the build up to that game. It was on. Yeah. It was, but yeah. it was, again, it was a massive, like. One on one, Main, well, even in the media, it was Maynard yeah. versus Green. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I remember coming out that week. I think we had all the media come in and talk yeah. to us. So I um I actually came out and said, "Yeah, I'll be on Toby." Blah blah. blah. And then I remember Bucks having a chat with me, and he wasn't too happy that I'd said that. So um, well, you're always going to play on him. Yeah, I think I think I was. Um, Calm down, but Bucks. Was it yeah, bring, I probably shouldn't have come out and said anything. Like yeah, I remember. Yes. Or something. I think I wrote the I feel story. Like I'm getting all yeah. the memories. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember saying something, but. Um, I feel like I just need to shut my mouth, shut my mouth. No, no, that's what we're saying. Like that's the theater. Yeah. I know. How much more exciting was it? Doesn't, it yeah. wasn't like a change your attitude. Yeah. It's I, like I, fascinating you, you definitely got to have a filter on what you say, but I guess it does. Definitely yeah. add some 
yeah. Toby knew you were coming to him, brother. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. What about you? We talked about your leadership and looking at, so looking after your kids. You looked after Nick Dacos because whenever they, the opposition tries to tag him, yeah. in particular the Swans, Dylan, Ryan Clark, um, went after him. <clears throat> Remember Clark kicked that goal and then went straight up to Nick and tried to rub it in his face. Yeah, 10 of them did, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then you went through the pack of Swans players like a bowling ball. And went straight after Clark and I, and I think Haywood. Well, what what was that moment like? Because you clearly well, it cost me a couple of K. So did it? But, um, yeah. <laughs> pass the hat around. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we actually did pass around and everyone chipped in, which I'm very thankful for. But um, yeah, I spoke to Triple M not too long ago, and I just spoke about how I've got a very protective nature, and um, any one of my teammates, I'm going to protect no matter the situation. So um, every bloody week, it's with Nick and someone targeting him. So whoever targets him gets targeted by us. So um, yeah, that was just one of the games where he probably got targeted a little bit more and Clark had kicked that first goal and then it was about 10 blokes just getting the nick and then Tom Papley just went up behind him and smashed him with an elbow and then it was pretty much on. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, lo I love, I love protecting my teammates and I love sort of being by their side and I feel like everyone's got that sort of connection and, um, willingness to help each other out and protect each other. So, um, it's great to be a part of. Is that why Nick hangs around? Buzzy a bit on the <laughs> yeah. halfback line. Well, so, it's funny. His mum and dad actually thanked me after the game for looking after him. They thank me every week. So um, they? it's quite funny. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Very cute. Hey, um, off the field, mate, what's happening? You, I know, um, you do some work with a special school, the Port yep. Phillips special school. And, um, I think now that's what ability, yep. um, isn't it? I yeah, spoke. it's what ability. Yeah. It's just like a mentoring, um, it's pretty much mentoring for kids, adults of all ages uh, with disabilities. Yep. Um, so pretty much you take maybe one day or two days a week and go spend time with them for, for a four hour block, uh, take some weight off the parents' shoulders and just sort of go shopping, bowling, uh, whatever it may look like, but you just sort of take them out of the house for a bit. And um, yeah, it's quite fun. I do get a lot out of it, but um, sort of lately I've, I haven't really been doing it as much. I, um, I'm really interested in recruiting. So I've had, um, a few talks with the, with, uh, with Decker and, um, yeah, I'm looking into that cause I feel like recruiting is something that I really want to do. And I really love watching football and I do go watch, um, Brighton grammar a few times every now and then on a Saturday. And, um, I generally have a love for watching football. So, and especially young talent. So it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how that goes. But, um, yeah, I'm looking into that at the moment, which, um, is, is pretty exciting. 10 years ago, if you had just said that. I would have just like literally fallen off my chair. I love watching footy. I'm interested in recruiting. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Breaking down the game yeah, plans. Well, some people don't actually realize, but I do love like watching football. Like I do watch a bit of football on the weekends, but of um, there's some games that I can't watch because I actually get too invested in it. Like the Carlton Melbourne game Worked a few up. weeks ago when Carlton won by a point. Like I, I, after the game, I was actually like shaking because I was so in like invested in the game. Wow. And I think there's a lot to play out in the last sort of bit of the year. So, um, yeah, close, sort of close games I can't watch or good teams I can't watch because, yeah, the anxiety builds up. Punch the TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> white line it's, um, yeah, no, I do, I do enjoy, I do enjoy watching football. Well, can I tell you what a principal at the Port Phillips Specialist School, Juliet Cooper said, um, about you. And there's this great photo of one of the students face painting your face mm. and Geordie's sitting next to you and he's losing it. Like yeah. he's, he's, he's pissing himself, but you're there and the kid's having a great time painting your face. <clears throat> Principal said he's fantastic with the kids. He's fantastic with the kids. And they're so excited um, to see him. He does all these clinics, he does handballing skills. They catch, they mark, and they just love being able to touch, um, the footy. He said, but you can only build that relationship when you can be patient and stay mm. calm, you know, because there are challenging situations. I said he's been able to build that relationship with the kids, you know, despite how tricky it can be, you know, complex needs, complex behaviors. And this is the bit that I love. Um, principal Cooper said his ability to remain calm and not be thrown by a difficult situation. has been great. Been very patient, understanding, wonderful and helpful. Wow. Keep, keeps, yeah. keeps very calm and his patience. Yet yeah. On, on the field. On the field, I'm just completely <laughs> off my head. Yeah, but I'm not too, I'm not it, too sure what that happened. But you say how much you got out of it. Like it must yeah. be incredibly rewarding for you. Yeah. Very rewarding. I did get a lot out of that. And I, um, I was there for about a year, year and a bit. And then obviously COVID hit, um, which made it difficult to go back. But some of the relationships I built with the students here and the teachers, mm. um, 
yeah, very grateful for those. Um, yeah, it was pretty, it was, I really enjoyed my time there and I'd go in there day, day a week or twice a week, just depending on the schedule. And yep. I got a lot out of it and the kids did too. And just seeing the smile on their faces was, was something that I'll cherish forever. Like some of the relationship, uh, relationships I've built with the students that have now moved on from Portfield specialist school. Um, it's quite funny. I actually have a few of them that still, uh, hit me up on Instagram. We chat every now and then we go back and forth with a few messages and, um, yeah, it's quite cute to be honest. I, um, I really enjoy sort of keeping in contact with those, with those students. It's, um, it's pretty funny. They're, they're diehard Collingwood supporters now. So they wish me (laughs) luck every week and, um, yeah, no, I'm very thankful to have those relationships. I should get back there soon. They'd love to, they'd love to see you. I'm sure. Hey, um, we have to talk a little bit about the actual, uh, football because, um, I don't know, have the wheels fallen off the pies and in particular, what's going on down in that back line? Because you were the best defense in the competition for a big part of this mm. season and Scotty teams are getting through you. Yeah, they are. So um, what is, what is happening back there? Yeah, we're just, we're a little bit out of whack on the weekend. Um, yeah, sort of the last month we haven't defended as well. Um, definitely as we would have liked, but, um, yeah, there's some certain areas that we feel like we can control and get back to doing and. You know, we've gone back to school, um, as Fly says this week on our defensive system, we've shined a light on, um, you know, so many things throughout the year that we're doing well and that we need to work on. And yeah, our group's extremely coachable and whenever we've shined a light on something, we seem to be able to address it pretty quickly. So yeah, we've spent a bit of, bit of time in the lab this week working on our defensive system and how to do it better. And, um, yeah, I feel like it's something that we all know we need to address because finals football, we've got to be able to defend and then score off the back of that. And. Yeah, our turnover game's not where we need it to be. So, yeah, we'll address that and get to work and then um, put it in action on Friday night with um, with the Bombers. Real perspective, Buzzy, because I mean, you the balls end up coming down on your head. Yep. So, uh, what are they putting on enough heat up there? What's Is the structure falling down? What's been the issue from your perspective? We'll come back to the team. It comes back to the team. And our team defense, yeah, hasn't been, hasn't been great. But um, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We're a really good bunch. Um, we, we defend... Really well, and there's just been a few um, yeah slip ups the last sort of couple of weeks, but it's very very easy fix, and I feel like um, yeah going into the last round into finals we'll just tighten a few screws up and we'll be so fine. Yep. I um, I trust the boys to be able to get it done. Have you boys lost any faith because the no. you were the you were the team to beat, and now I'm seeing a few cracks. So are you going to be able to deliver when the pressure goes up, Scott? That's the question because yeah, other teams absolutely. are playing better footy than you guys right now. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and that's our challenge is to get better defensively, um, offensively we're going, you know, we're doing a lot of things, right. Yep. Um, you know, we're scoring really well once we go inside. So it's like everyone, there's little challenges and ebbs and flows throughout the season and ours is just coming at the moment and we've got to work through it as a group. And Mm -hmm. as Bruzzy said, I'd I'd be really concerned if we didn't defend well all year, but Mm -hmm. it's just sort of been the last month we've, we've lost our way a little bit and now we can readdress because as you said, we were the best defensive side. So it's not like we don't have the ability to get back to that. Um, so yeah, we'll get back to that. As I said, we've gone to school, spent a fair bit of time in the lab and we'll bring it out Friday night and, and for finals, which as a, as our coach said, you've got to qualify and you've got to qualify as high as you can on the ladder. And at the moment where we've qualified and we're probably going to end up, I think we can end up no lower than second. Mm-hmm. So we've qualified, given ourselves <laughs> that chance. And you know, the, the, the challenge for us is not to look too far ahead to that first final. It's to live in the moment and let's get it done. I actually thought the game was a cracking game on Friday night. It was yep. a pretty off- offensive game. Both sides scored pretty freely. Probably a good one to watch. It was, yep. um, wasn't the most bruising game of footy either. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty open and quick at, under the roof, which is, you know, it's great when you play at Marvel because you get those perfect conditions and mm. the ball moves qu- pretty quickly. But, you know, for probably both sides, we know that we've got to tighten up defensively and Brisbane would probably be saying the same thing that we scored too easily. So we've both got to address that. And yeah, looking forward to, you know, Friday night and, putting our, our best brand on the park. Need to, need to, that's for sure. Um, before we wind up, Bruzzy, how's uh, Scotty going? Had a very good game at the weekend. Yeah, um, I, I know he's the great, I think he's the oldest player in the competition next year. By far, isn't he? How, um, how old he did? 35. 35. How's he traveling, oh, you reckon? Yeah. He's flying. I can't believe some of the footies he's actually playing. Like he, how long have you been in the system for now, Dip? 18. Uh, 18. 18 years. These what? boys keep me young. Yeah. It's pretty crazy to see someone go about it the way he does, like on and off the field. He's, he just dominates. He's, he's one of the best leaders, if not the best leader that I've ever, um, played with. And, um, 
it's yeah, it's a true honour to play with you, Dip. I um I've learnt a lot off here, and um I can't wait to see what we can do in the coming years, and hopefully this year. But yeah, it's it's a credit to play with you, Matt. Oh, Thanks, look at that! I feel like grabbing a jet. Grab a jumper, boys. <laughs> get in. Let's get out there. I love it. Hey, um, before we finish, Scotty, so you you, you predicted the future with the video review. Last week, you remember the Carlton Melbourne game and the controversy? I just said I would hate for this to cost someone a final. You did something along those lines, like, and I said also that the worst, what I hate in you know when like you lose a game but you played really well and they're like, oh, we didn't lose because of the VAR. Yep, quarters one and two weren't good enough. Mm. It's like, well, guess what? Quarters three and four, you dominate, and that's football. You don't dominate for a whole game. Yeah, yeah. I feel incredibly sorry for Adelaide. Adelaide and. The hard thing is there's still going to be a minute 10 on the clock. Yep. So, you you know, whatever it is, but it's like, so Sydney have a chance and we've been in that situation before. A minute 10 is a long time, even mm. if you're down to get back in front. But yeah, I didn't want to see this situation and it's already been spoken about enough, but yeah, I, I like, so from my understanding, it, it wasn't reviewed. That was the big mistake. Correct. So the goal umpire is within his right to make a call. Yep. He thought it hit the post, but it should be reviewed. Yes. Even, and Sydney smartly, I think did the right thing, grab the ball and go. Yeah, like don't sit there and like who kicks it and get it and go. So the game's just back in motion. But I have no qualms if they had to stop play, if that ball's on the wing and be like, nah, that was a goal. We're back to the center bounce, reset the clock to whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's a monumental mistake. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I saw yesterday that um, Daisy. No, nah, what's what's his name? Um, Adelaide coach's name? Matthew Nix. Yeah, Matthew Nix. That's right. He actually came out last week after the Melbourne. Carlton game and he actually said I'd hate for that to happen to us yeah no score review or whatever and it turned yeah. on us and then a week later it actually happened to him and they lost the game and um oh god you'd be financially, so financially how much would that cost you Adelaide would be so filthy yeah so, so if Adelaide win this week against West Coast yep. and they make a final yep and then they win a final like financially that's like a huge sponsorships yeah. membership marketing all of that Daisy Thomas Nathan Brown Triple M on Sunday said that if that happened at Collingwood, they, uh, Eddie Maguire would have been and George F. Brown would have been up at City Hall That's saying, nice. we want a replay yeah. or or something like that. Hard to take on the AFL and win that yeah, battle. Yeah. But you did predict the future. You said this was going to cost someone a finals berth. And next minute, um, the Crows go down and don't make September. So you're all over it. Maybe they're going to they tidy up the system. Maybe the, That's where the field umpire maybe has to say, no, yeah. that looks close. Well, Let's think, go and check. Just the, composure. The, the big mistake is not reviewing it. Even yeah. if Sydney, and I said like tactically, yep. like that was brilliant by them. Get the ball in. If it's ever in doubt, just get it in and try and play on as quickly as you can if it's after a point because the game's yep. just back in motion. Yep. But maybe that's something to do. Like if it, even if the, the game does go back in motion yep. and if that gets reviewed and it's a goal, yep. game just stops, you go back to the middle, you reset the clock to yep. what it was when the goal was kicked. That's just what it is. So it was just a bad speak. mistake, was it? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, yeah. it'd be Before we finish up, how's your shoulder, mate? I saw you a couple of weeks, a couple of months ago. You're yeah. carrying a sore shoulder. You look very brave and courageous. Continue to play. And you must put a lot of effort into your body to play so f so combative and physical throughout the week. And a lot yeah. must go into that. It does. On all the other days. But are you, are you okay? Are you still carrying something? Yeah, no, I'm okay. I, um, I've been getting to work sort of every main day in the morning. I'm doing extra gym sessions with a few of the other boys that have dodgy shoulders and um, yeah, just building the strength back up into it. And, um, yeah, it, it is going fine. I did see the surgeon this morning, but got the all clear, which, which would be good to, um, stay away from mm. surgery in the off season. Cause I had surgery on my left one last off season. And, um, like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again, but, um, so is it yeah. the same one or the other one? It's actually the other one. Ugh. Um, so I've got hypermobile shoulders. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting one, but I've just got to stay on top of everything with, with my exercises and strengthening around it. So, um, yeah, so that be way fine. you could potentially avoid surgery at the end of the year, hopefully. Yeah. Is that the hopefully. hope? Yeah, that is the hope. I think I'll be right. I think Jezza Cameron is facing a similar situation um, this week. I think he's been carrying a shoulder thing. Bruzzy, you've been fantastic. We are honest in saying, mate, I think every footy fan loves the way you play on the field because you give 100% all the time. You absolutely love your mates. And you've grown and um, matured and you've been on the – an incredible journey, which is still 180 games in. You've still got a lot of footy left and we'll enjoy watching you play. Thanks so much for taking some time for the Drock and Journo podcast. This Thanks week. guys. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank S you. <laughs> Scotty, you've been fantastic as always. Thanks Jay Z. Thanks bros for coming in, mate. Thanks man. Now you get the four points this week so we can, um, en enter September. 
sort of full of confidence and positivity and optimism. I don't want right. to come in here and yeah, ask you cranky questions. <laughs> thanks for thanks for the heads up. Let's try and get the four points. Brilliant. About Real the motivational. <laughs> he, often, he gives you that deadpan look sometimes. It's uh, it's unsettling. Scary. Thanks for joining us on the Jock and Journo show. We'll catch you next week.